So from where you sit, mm -hmm. what are our biggest barriers to equity? Um, I, think, I think one of our biggest barriers um, to equity in APS is designing systems that support all students. Mm. So from a continuum of sort of universal um, core instruction all the way through um, advanced for our kids who are identified um, gifted and mm. In between, some of our, our students who are identified with disabilities and really providing a continuum of services that kids can move through um, to be working, always working towards that advanced level. I think that's one of our biggest barriers. I think one of our other barriers um, to equity is, I think, resources. So um, mm. I think we look at resources. Um, it's and, and I think one of my questions is how are we getting the resources to the people who are in front of kids every day? And how are they learning how to use those resources to build capacity in themselves as educators mm -hmm. and for our students? Um, one of the other, I think, barriers is, um, I think we, talk, we just talked about this, is time in front of our teachers for, for, for differentiated professional development. Yeah. And so um, I think that's a barrier in terms of equity, is getting in front of our teachers more and providing quality professionally, professional learning opportunities so that they build their skills skill set. Yeah, so you, you sort of see these three big barriers of um, uh, the, the full scope of students um, mm -hmm. and being able to support them where they are and moving them in into um, you know sort of with rigor and being able to, to advance them along um, the barrier of uh, resources and making sure the resources get to the right uh, the right people at the right time um, I think you included both students and teachers in that and then also looking at it from the lens of how is it that we provide enough time and time and space for teachers to be able to learn how to use those resources or, or perhaps how to, how to do things differently? Um, I'm interested in maybe tackling that first one a little bit. So you have this huge range of students um, who have all different needs. How can you truly support all of the needs that you see across the different students and student types. I mean, mm -hmm. obviously, you you, um, you may look at it from the perspective of you know you you present this way, so this is maybe a support that might be valuable to you. How how can you do that? I, I think that's where our our you know our our P twenty support team members come in in helping support those processes in schools. So our M, our MTSS partners in helping um, teams designs multi-tiered system of support that support behavior and instruction. Mm. And so how, and, and looking at universal instruction, looking at tier two instruction, looking at tier three instruction, and then into that evaluation process if necessary for a student with maybe a possible, a possible disability. Um, and then providing the, what the resources that that student needs um, in, in, in terms to close the gaps. Um, mm. I mean, it, it is a huge continuum. And then on the other end of the spectrum, it, I think um, we just went through an external review for gifted education. And um, I think uh, some of our findings were that um, there's places where we're differentiating instruction and providing rigor. We should be providing rigor um, along the continuum, sure. but to really, how are we pushing those students to advanced places for work, advanced places for work. So if you are supporting every every different type of child, mm -hmm. you were speaking specifically about those gifted students who needed more mm -hmm. uh, more rigorous uh, assignments or different kinds of tasks, um, do you feel like all students need to have a, uh, a plan of support um, that is specific to them um, in the same way that we might support students uh, with IEPs or advanced learning plans? Um, do you feel like uh, that is, a, that is a, uh, a need for all students to have that level of planning? I, I think we have to plan for all of those, for all kids. Mm -hmm. um, and I think with you know, our strategic plan, kids having plans, I think is important because then we're, we're meeting them where they're coming to us at. Um, 
you know, haven't been in school. I, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of nuances to, to some of the students. We our diverse population, and so I think our alignment with the strategic plan is is um, with kids having plans is important mm -hmm. to support their development towards those post work workforce readiness skills. Mm -hmm. And I think anywhere along the continuum from our gifted kids actually to our most impacted students and how are we going to make them as independent as possible in the community with adult independent living. So I, I do feel like um, that the plan is important mm -hmm. and it, it helps us individualize and build relationships and rapport with students when we know exact we know them well and we know exactly what they need. Mm -hmm. So let's say that the students have a plan, mm -hmm. right? And I think we've said that they should, right? Like um, mm -hmm. and that makes sense. Um, you were talking about the the barrier of mm -hmm. not having the resources perhaps mm -hmm. in order to execute on those plans. Mm -hmm. Um, how do you feel like we should be uh, um, empowering teachers or students to be able to better advocate for those resources or to be able to simply just ask, like, this is what we need in our classrooms, how can we do that and how can we better sort of uh, allow for that advocacy to, to really take hold? So, I, I mean, I think it's important. I think working with our, our kids at a very young age on being able to advocate for themselves mm -hmm. um, with our students like who are piloting um, the plans in fourth and fifth grade, I think that lends itself to that advo advocacy. Mm -hmm. We always encourage, we always want kids on IEPs to participate in our IE IEP meetings so they're learning those self-advocacy skills. And I think also on, we, you know, with our gifted learners, you know, we're encouraging them to uh, participate in their advanced learning plan, so that they are have those self advocacy skills that move them towards their post work, you know, their post workforce readiness outcomes. Mm -hmm. um, and 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 I think one of the things is teaching kids how to identify what they need. Mm -hmm. um, how do you do that? How do you support kids in, in either knowing what they need or just identifying? I think that through that IEP process uh -huh. that you're working with that student saying, you know, these are, do you know what your accommodations are? Do you know if you need modifications for anything? Are you using assistive technology? Are you getting support using assistive technology to help, to help you access general ed curriculum? Yeah. I think those are all important things, especially our special education teachers need to work with on students. Hmm. Well, I feel like you definitely have tackled this question um, and, and, and provided, you know, some ways of, of getting around those barriers, quite frankly. Um, I'm interested in what your question is that you would want us to be tackling together. What is the question that you think that uh, we as APS should really be asking and trying to answer? Again, I'm going to go back to um, how I guess my question is, how are we ensuring that the work we're doing across the district and across P20 communities are getting down to the boots on the ground? So teachers, so getting down to teachers and then getting to students. Mm -hmm. I think that's my question is how, how are, how, I'm not how, how are we doing that? Um, how are we having impact and, um, and supporting teachers directly in classrooms and students. Exactly, so that we actually see students closing the achievement gap. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that if we were asking and answering that question <laughs> on a daily basis, that changes the, the conversation a little bit. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like that's a question that you could ask of colleagues that you see every day? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And I think um, as we walk through classrooms mm -hmm. um, together with different members of our team, I think those are the questions we have to ask is, you know, we're, we, we're doing, you know, we have all this work going on. What are we seeing in classrooms? Yeah. And how are we having those conversations, those collaborative conversations about what is, what am I noticing that students and teachers are doing in classrooms? Mm -hmm. And I think that shared language, the shared knowledge of what it looks like and also that relationship that you're building with those teachers that you're, that you're seeing, um, I think that it, it, 
changes changes the conversation fundamentally from a an us and them or from a um, you know you know we are we are trying to figure out the things you are trying to do the things yeah. and really uh, makes that a lot more collaborative in, yeah. in nature um, absolutely well I really appreciate your time thank you, thank you thank, so much thank for you <laughs>